have to learn that disappointments are a part of life. Now, go wash your hands to get ready for dinner. The casting process for the 1981 TV series Give Me a Break was a careful selection of talents who could bring the characters to life. Nell Carter, a well-established Broadway star, was cast as the series lead, Nell Harper. Her comedic timing and strong vocals made her a perfect fit for the role. The role of Margaret Douglas, the family's housekeeper, was given to Lonnie Anderson. However, she left the show after the first season due to creative differences. She was replaced by Rosetta Lenoir, who brought a warm and nurturing presence to the character of Addie. The three Douglas children were played by Dolph Sweet as Carl, Kari Michelson as Katie, and Laura Jill Miller as Samantha. Dolph Sweet, a seasoned character actor, was chosen for his ability to portray a caring yet firm father figure. Kari Michelson, a newcomer, was selected for her wholesome and relatable portrayal of Katie. Laura Jill Miller, also new to acting, was cast as the youngest child, Samantha, due to her natural charm and innocence. The chemistry between the actors was tested during the audition process. The producers were looking for a cast that could create a believable and loving family dynamic. The cast members' ability to play off each other and create a warm, comedic environment was a crucial factor in the final decisions. One pivotal moment in the casting process was when Nell Carter performed the theme song during her audition. Her powerful voice and the song's uplifting message set the tone for the series and solidified her role as the lead. In conclusion, the casting of Gimme a Break was a thoughtful process that brought together a talented and diverse cast. Each actor's unique abilities and chemistry with the rest of the cast contributed to the show's success and enduring popularity. And the wine is French. Uh, just like the car, Chevrolet. <laughs> the director of Gimme a Break, Jay Sandridge, brought a unique vision to the 1981 TV series. Known for his work on the Mary Tyler Moore Show and the Cosby Show, Sandridge had a knack for creating warm, relatable comedies. He emphasized ensemble work, encouraging the cast to develop their characters' relationships and dynamics. Sandridge's style was characterized by a gentle, nuanced approach to comedy. He believed in setting a comfortable, creative atmosphere on set, fostering a sense of collaboration between the cast and crew. This collaborative spirit was evident in the way he worked with actors, often giving them the freedom to improvise and explore their characters. Sandridge's creative influences included classic sitcoms and the works of groundbreaking directors like Billy Wilder. He incorporated elements of these influences into his own style, creating a blend of traditional and innovative storytelling techniques. In Give Me a Break, Sandwich's vision was brought to life through his collaboration with the cast and crew. He worked closely with the writers to develop the show's humor and heart, and with a cinematographer to create a visually appealing and engaging series. The result was a beloved sitcom that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on television comedy. You offended me and a lot of other deep... Give Me a Break was a popular TV series that aired from 1981 to 1987. It starred Nell Carter as a housekeeper for a widowed police chief and his three daughters. The show was known for its humor, drama, and heartwarming moments. Despite being over 40 years old, Give Me a Break remains an enduring symbol of the TV industry. Its relatable characters, timeless humor, and memorable storylines have made it a classic that continues to be watched and enjoyed today. Did you know that Nell Carter won an Emmy for her role as Nell Harper in 1982? Or that the show tackled serious issues like racism, sexism, and addiction? There are many more surprising and fascinating facts about Give Me a Break that will make you laugh, cry, and appreciate the show even more. This TV series has had a significant impact on many people's lives, including mine. I remember watching Give Me a Break with my family and laughing together at the funny moments and feeling touched by the emotional ones. The show taught me about the importance of family, friendship, and kindness. What about you? Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to Give Me a Break? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, stay tuned for some shocking, funny, and sad facts about Give Me a Break. That will make you appreciate this classic TV series even more. Set this aside for your chief to No, no, call him Carl, honey. Miss, uh... Oh, a Whittingham. Melissa. The production of the 1981 TV series Give Me a Break 
took place primarily in Los Angeles, with the interiors of the fictional Nell's boarding house and the police station being filmed in Hollywood studios. The set designers paid meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that Nell's warm and cozy home felt inviting, while the police station exuded a more formal and official atmosphere. The exterior scenes of Nell's home were shot in a quiet suburban neighborhood, contrasting with the bustling city life often portrayed in the series. Filming in these locations presented logistical challenges, such as managing traffic, coordinating with local residents, and ensuring that the production caused minimal disruption to the neighborhood. Give me a break! was one of the first TV series to extensively use video assist technology, which allowed the director and crew to review footage immediately after shooting. This innovation significantly improved production efficiency as it reduced the need for time-consuming film processing and enabled the team to make quicker decisions about reshoots and editing. The series also made innovative use of handheld cameras during some scenes, providing a more dynamic and intimate filming style. This approach was particularly effective in capturing the characters' emotions and reactions, contributing to the show's overall warmth and humor. Despite the challenges of filming in various locations and employing new technologies, the production of Gimme a Break ran smoothly, delivering a beloved and enduring TV series that continues to entertain audiences today. I know where I seen you. I seen you with that single bar right down on Central Street. The gap and grab, yeah! <laughs> The 1981 TV series Gimme a Break had several guest stars over the course of its run, some of whom are well known in the entertainment industry. One such guest star is Helen Hunt, who has had a successful career in both film and television. Another notable guest star is Hazel Shermit, who made three appearances on the show as different characters. Shermit's first two appearances were during the first season, and her third was in the second season. One episode that stands out is Emergency in which Shermit played a busybody on a hospital payphone. Her performance in this episode was particularly noteworthy, showcasing her range as an actress. If you're interested in learning more about this episode, I've written a review that has been posted. I would love to hear any thoughts or feedback from readers. Give Me a Break was a popular show during its time, and it continues to have a following today. While it may not be as well known to younger generations, it remains a classic example of sitcoms from the 1980s. With its talented cast and memorable episodes, it's no wonder that the show has left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Just like Mikhail Baryshnikov was born to dance, just like Al Pacino was born to be an actor. And the creation of a musical score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of filmmaking as it enhances the narrative and emotional tone of the series. In the case of the 1981 TV series Give Me a Break, the music played a significant role in complementing the show's light-hearted and comedic tone. The soundtrack for Give Me a Break was composed by Dennis Crosby, who was already an established musician and composer before joining the show. Crosby's compositions were upbeat and lively, perfectly capturing the playful spirit of the series. The music was designed to enhance the comedic timing of the show's jokes and physical comedy making it an essential part of the show's overall appeal. In creating the score, Crosby drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including classic comedy films and television shows. He aimed to create music that was both memorable and catchy, with a sound that would be instantly recognizable to viewers. The result was a series of musical themes that perfectly captured the show's unique tone and style. The musicians involved in the creation of the Gimme a Break Soundtrack were all highly skilled professionals with years of experience in the music industry. Many of them had worked with Crosby on previous projects and their familiarity with his style and approach made for a smooth and collaborative creative process. One of the most memorable musical moments in Gimme a Break comes in the opening credits which feature a lively and upbeat theme song performed by the show's cast. The song, which was also composed by Crosby, sets the tone for the entire series and establishes the show's unique blend of comedy and music. Overall, the musical score and soundtrack for Gimme a Break were essential components of the show's success. They helped to establish the show's lighthearted and comedic tone and provided viewers with a catchy and memorable soundtrack that they could enjoy for years to come. Okay, why don't we run your number through the computer? Good. In the fifth season premiere of Gimme a Break, the character of the Chief, played by Nell Carter, 
exits the show in a poignant way, with the picture fading out slowly and no applause from the audience. This departure marked a significant change for the series. Rue McClanahan, who played the lovable and feisty Blanche DeVereaux on The Golden Girls, is known for her ability to portray the same character across multiple TV series, including The Golden Palace, Nurses, and Empty Nest. Rosie O'Donnell, who appeared on Gimme a Break, as Maggie O'Brien, has a distinctive tattoo of a chain of roses on her ankle. This small detail adds to her unique and memorable presence on the show. Not tonight, Chief. One of the most iconic scenes in Gimme a Break is from the episode The House Guest. In this scene, Nell Harper, played by Nell Carter, sings ease on down the road to calm down a stressed out Margaret Douglas, portrayed by Kari Michelsonator, the director, Asad Kalata, used a single shot to capture Nell's soothing performance with a softly lit close-up of her face. Nell Carter's powerful and emotional voice, combined with her heartfelt expression, created a memorable and touching moment. Carter, in an interview, mentioned that she felt a personal connection to the song, which helped her deliver a genuine performance. The combination of her emotional connection and the director's choice of a close-up shot allowed the audience to truly feel Nell's empathy towards Margaret's character. Another iconic scene is from the episode The Pregnancy Test. In this scene, Nell Harper discovers she's pregnant and shares the news with her close friend, Addie, played by Lonnie Anderson. The scene is shot in a cozy living room with warm lighting and soft colors creating an intimate atmosphere. The director, Joel Zwick, chose to use a two-shot to capture both Nell and Addie in the frame, highlighting their friendship and support for each other. Nell Carter, in an interview, expressed her appreciation for the scene, stating that it allowed her to showcase the emotional depth of her character. The honest and heartfelt performances from both Carter and Anderson made the scene resonate with the audience, emphasizing the importance of friendship during challenging times. These iconic scenes from Gimme a Break have left a lasting impact on the audience thanks to the strong direction, powerful performances, and thoughtful cinematography. The show's ability to tackle serious and emotional topics while maintaining a light-hearted tone has made it a beloved classic among viewers. I want you to know I'm buying this whole thing. <laughs> Jonathan Silverman, known for his role in Gimme a Break, had a friendship with David Schwimmer, who would later star in Friends. Before joining the group Tony Orlando and Dawn, Thelma Hopkins was a sought-after background singer in Detroit, providing vocals for famous musicians such as Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye. In one episode of Gimme a Break, titled Knock Three Times, she connected with her past as a member of Tony Orlando and Dawn, who had a hit song with the same title. Hi, I brought up a pop. Let's take a look at this. Is this beautiful or what? Oh, no, it looks wonderful. Of course it looks wonderful. My butcher's name is... Gimme a Break, a 1981 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact through its portrayal of a widowed police chief and his relationship with his African-American housekeeper, Nell Harper. The show resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of humor, drama, and social commentary. It challenged traditional stereotypes and contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as race relations and single parenthood. The series was one of the first to feature an interracial friendship between a white family and an African-American woman in a prominent role. Nell Harper, played by Nell Carter, was a strong, independent, and intelligent character who became a positive role model for African-American women and helped to break down racial barriers in television. Give me a break also explored the theme of single parenthood as the police chief, McGarrett, struggled to raise his three daughters after the death of his wife. The show addressed the challenges faced by single parents and the importance of supportive relationships in overcoming these obstacles. The series influenced pop culture by showcasing a diverse cast and addressing relevant social issues. It paved the way for future TV shows to feature diverse characters and explore complex social themes. The show's catchy theme song and memorable characters such as Nell Harper and her love interest, Eddie, also contributed to its popularity and enduring legacy. In conclusion, Give Me a Break made a significant cultural and social impact by challenging traditional stereotypes, exploring relevant social themes, and featuring a diverse cast. The series resonated with audiences and influenced pop culture by showcasing a positive portrayal of interracial friendship 
and addressing the challenges faced by single parents. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, okay, I'll be right and down. I'll, I'll be right, I, I, right behind. Okay, behind. In the early 1980s, the TV show Give Me a Break featured instances of physical discipline that would be considered unacceptable today. The character of the chief, a police officer, threatens to spank Samantha and chases Katie while holding his blue lieutenant. These actions reflect the societal norms of the time, but they would not be deemed appropriate in contemporary programming. The original choice for the role of Samantha was Tracy Gold, but she was replaced by Laura Jo Miller before filming began. Gold later became known for her role in the TV show Growing Pains. Rue McClanahan, who played Nell Harper on Gimme a Break, was an advocate for animal rights. In 2003, she spoke out against the use of diving horses at a theme park in New York. Her activism highlights her compassion for animals and her commitment to their welfare. What is all this, huh? Am I dying of something? <laughs> oh, it's Give Me a Break, a sitcom that aired from 1981 to 1987, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised the show for its diverse cast and humor, while others criticized it for its stereotypical characters and formulaic plots. The New York Times, in a 1981 review, called the show pleasant and amiable, highlighting Nell Carter's performance as the standout element of the series. The Los Angeles Times also praised Carter, stating that she brings warmth, humor, and dignity to her role. However, other critics were less kind. The Boston Globe criticized the show for its predictable and unfunny plots, while the Washington Post called it a collection of stereotypes. Despite the mixed reviews, Gimme a Break was a hit with audiences, consistently ranking in the top 30 shows during its run. The show also received several award nominations, including three Emmy nominations for Nell Carter's performance and one Golden Globe nomination for Best Television Series Musical or Comedy. The accolades received by Gimme a Break are significant for those involved in the show as they demonstrate the impact and popularity of the series. The Emmy and Golden Globe nomination, in particular, are a testament to Nell Carter's exceptional acting abilities and her ability to bring depth and nuance to her character. Overall, while Give Me a Break received mixed reviews from critics, its popularity with audiences, and award nominations speak to its enduring appeal and the talent of those involved in its production. This country, I believe in education. That's why I play the lottery. <laughs> One in the series, Mel and the Kaniskis owned a black goldfish named Gertrude. Interestingly, Gertrude repeatedly met unfortunate fates throughout the show, only to miraculously reappear later on. To Matthew Lawrence, a member of the cast, is the middle brother of actors Joey Lawrence and Andrew Lawrence. Three Nedra Vols, another cast member, had two children named Edward Vols and Linda Defender. It was when Princess Dies, Lady in Waiting, came over to me and I told her that you were the best friend in the... In, in the making of Gimme a Break, which aired from 1981 to 1987, the cast and crew had many memorable experiences. Nell Carter, who played the housekeeper Nell Harper, was known for her powerful voice and often sang the theme song live on set. The young cast members, including Laura Jill Miller and Joey Lawrence, have shared stories about how Nell Carter took them under her wing and helped them navigate the entertainment industry. Behind the scenes, the set of Gimme a Break was a lively and bustling place. The crew was often challenged to keep up with Nell Carter's energy and quick wit as she frequently improvised lines and added her own comedic touches to scenes. Despite the fast-paced and sometimes chaotic environment, the cast and crew formed close bonds and have many fond memories of their time together. One particularly memorable moment occurred during the filming of a live episode in front of a studio audience. Nell Carter, known for her improvisational skills, ad-libbed a joke that left the audience in stitches and became a classic moment in the show's history. The joke involved a prop telephone and a clever punchline that had the audience laughing for minutes. Overall, the making of Gimme a Break was a joyful and unforgettable experience for all involved. The cast and crew formed a tight-knit community and created a show that brought laughter and warmth to audiences for many years. Chief Kaniski, I guess I better be going. Oh yeah, well listen, thanks very much. Uh... Simpson, Ralph, Nell Carter, the star of Gimme a Break, publicly acknowledged her struggle with a severe cocaine addiction during her time on the show, which significantly worsened. 
Jay Johnson, another cast member, went on to win a Tony Award in 2007 for his Broadway show, Jay Johnson the Two, and only, Matthew Lawrence, one of the child actors, has credited his older brother for inspiring him to pursue acting. Despite the challenges faced by the cast, the show remained popular and had a significant impact on the careers of its actors. You're terrific. All right then, what are we doing hanging around this dump for? Give me a break. A 1981 TV series may not be as prominent in film history as some other shows, but it certainly left its mark. The sitcom, which starred Nell Carter as a housekeeper for a California police chief's family, was one of the first to feature a black woman in a prominent role. This representation was groundbreaking and paved the way for future diverse casting. The show's impact on future filmmaking is evident in the way it tackles serious issues with humor and heart. It was one of the first sitcoms to address topics like racism, gender stereotypes, and single parenthood in a way that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. This approach has since been adopted by many successful modern sitcoms. As for subsequent works, Gimme a Break inspired several spin-offs and reboots. While none were as successful as the original, they kept the show's spirit alive and introduced a new generation to its unique blend of comedy and drama. The show's influence can also be seen in the many sitcoms that have followed in its footsteps, using humor to explore serious issues and promote diversity. In conclusion, while Gimme a Break may not be a household name, its legacy and influence are undeniable. It broke barriers, tackled important issues, and inspired future filmmakers, leaving a lasting impact on the world of television. Well, what did I do? You know exactly what you did. Now go to your room. All she wanted was some great... I... Rue McClanahan, one of the stars of Gimme a Break, had a humble beginning as a file clerk in New York City before making it big in the theater. Thelma Hopkin, another cast member, has a sister named Teresa Hopkins. Before her acting career, Rosie O'Donnell was voted most popular in her high school class. These are just a few of the interesting facts about the talented cast of Gimme a Break from 1981. Bernie deposit. Marty, adios. That's Spanish for get out. Hey, business is business. If you... John Ottrin, the director of Gimme a Break, holds a B in mathematics, physics, and history from Dakota Wesleyan University. Paul Sam, one of the actors, is known for his sad sack and rumpled appearance, conveying New York neuroticism in the early 70s TV scene. He was discovered and promoted by Mary Tyler Moore and her production company and had previously worked with Valerie Harper in Paul Sills Story Theater. Rosie O'Donnell, another actor in the series, collects Barbie dolls and received a Barbie doll sculpted in her likeness in 1999 based on her talk show. Clean. Have you said thank you, Mama? No. What? I have been doing all the cooking. Nell Carter, known for her role in Gimme a Break, faced financial struggles near the end of her life, filing for bankruptcy before her death. Contrarily, co-star Nedra Valls had a rich and varied career with experience in vaudeville, radio, musical theater, and tent shows. As for John Ottrin, he studied with Second City in Chicago, Illinois, under teacher Joe Forsberg, developing his skills in comedy and improvisation. He doesn't care. In the 1980s TV series Gimme a Break, several actors played characters with the same names as themselves, including Nell Carter, Jonathan Silverman, Joey Lawrence, and Matthew Lawrence. Joey Lawrence gained recognition as a notable child star, ranking 21st in VH1's list of the 100 greatest kid stars. Unfortunately, behind the scenes, two actresses struggled with eating disorders. Kari Michelson and Nell Carter both experienced difficulties, with Carter binge eating and Michelson engaging in binge eating, purging, and fasting. These struggles highlight the challenges that can arise in the entertainment industry, even for those who appear successful and well-adjusted on screen. I think it's some kind of meat. John Ottrin, known for his role in the television series Gimme a Break, had a notable career before his acting debut. He starred in Thomas M. Hamill's film Me and Mama at the Art Center College of Design and held the rank of captain in the Civil Air Patrol, Auxiliary United States Air Force. Selected from the state of Illinois for space age orientation, Ottrin's background was as impressive as his on-screen performance. In addition, Helen Hunt, an accomplished actress, auditioned for the role of Katie Kaniski in Gimme a Break. 
although she did not secure the lead role. She appeared in a season one episode as one of Katie's friends, showcasing her talent even in a minor role. Her future success in the industry is a testament to her determination and skill. Oh, I know I've hurt you, but it's for your own good. <laughs> You'll be starting college next year and you should feel... Rosie O'Donnell is known for her love of toys, particularly McDonald's Happy Meal toys, and has a substantial collection. The show's cast faced personal tragedies, with both Dolph Sweet and Nell Carter passing away before the age of 65. Sweet died in 1985, while the show was still on air in Carter and 23. Rosetta Lenoir, another cast member, had a notable past, having taken care of James Earl Jones when he was an infant during her time in his father's acting troupe. Oh, that's right. They let all the loonies rest there. <laughs> you want me to cut some meat for Cut some meat. Rosie O'Donnell, known for her comedic talents, sometimes refers to herself as the comic from Kamak. Her acting career includes significant roles, such as in the film A League of Their Own, which has been recognized by the Library of Congress for its cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance. Thelma Hopkins, another talented individual, is one half of Dawn, a member of the singing group Tony Orlando and Dawn. Beyond her music career, Hopkins has also made her mark in the acting world, appearing in various television shows and movies. Now I'm going to send the waitress over. Just to stay away from the fish. Thelma Hopkins, known for her role in Gimme a Break, was initially cast as Bill Cosby's wife in the show Cosby, but was replaced by Felicia Rushod. Hopkins' departure was due to Cosby's preference for Rushod's improvisational skills. Before her acting career, Rue McClanahan, another Gimme a Break, cast member, graduated cum laude from the University of Tulsa with a joint degree in German and theater arts. She was the only female member of her school science club and a member of the Kappa Alpha Theta sorority. John Hoyt, who also appeared in Gimme a Break, passed away on September 15, 1991, just three weeks shy of his 86th birthday. His acting career spanned several decades, and he left a lasting impression on audiences before his untimely death. Smile, Jackson, smile, smile and stick it. Rosie O'Donnell, a notable cast member of Gimme a Break, showcased her talent early on by winning 20,000 on Star Search in 1983. Another young star from the series, Joey Lawrence, became a father in 2023 to a daughter named Dylan Rose Lawrence. Lastly, Patrick Breen, who also appeared in Gimme a Break, has had a unique career, playing an alien disguised as a human in both Men in Black and Galaxy Quest. His ability to bring such diverse characters to life is a testament to his acting range. Jonathan Silverman, known for his role on Gimme a Break, comes from a lineage of religious figures. His grandfather is the renowned Rabbi Morris Silverman, and his father is Hillel Silverman. On the other hand, Rosie O'Donnell, who also appeared on the show, is a well-known fan of the Harry Potter book series. She even offered to play Molly Weasley in the first film for free. John Hoyt, another cast member, had a prolific career in acting, with his final role being that of Grandpa Stanley Kaniski on Gimme a Break. These are just a few of the interesting facts about the talented individuals who brought the show to life. Teacher, she didn't listen to nobody. She made me practice every afternoon. Well, I Rosie O'Donnell's father, Edward, had a unique profession as a spy camera engineer for a defense corporation. In the TV series Gimme a Break, Rosie played a significant role. Meanwhile, Nell Carter's biography can be found in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, where her contributions and achievements are detailed. Jonathan Silverman, another cast member, experienced a life-changing event years after the show's conclusion. In 2017, he became a father to a baby girl named Ella Jack Silverman, whom he shares with his wife, Jennifer Finnegan. This new addition to his family has undoubtedly brought him immense joy and new responsibilities. And at the last minute by some dim bulb making a lame brain mistake. What's that got to do with John Ottron, known for his role in Missing in Action Roman II The Beginning, had a diverse acting career. On the other hand, Nell Carter, who starred in Gimme a Break, achieved success not only on television but also on Broadway. She won a Tony Award for Ain't Misbehavin' and an Emmy in 1982 for its TV broadcast. Carter also received two Emmy nominations for Gimme a Break. 
Meanwhile, Rosie O'Donnell, who appeared in the same series, is a mother of five. She has adopted three children, Parker, Chelsea, and Blake, and has two biological children, Vivienne and Dakota. Vivienne was born by O'Donnell's first wife, Kelly, while Dakota was adopted with her second wife, Michelle Rounds. O'Donnell's children have been a significant part of her life and career. In summary, the cast of Gimme a Break had notable achievements beyond the show. Autran's role in Missing in Action Roman II The Beginning showcased his versatility as an actor, while Carter's success on Broadway and on television, including her award-winning performance in Ain't Misbehavin, and her role in Gimme a Break solidified her status as a talented actress. O'Donnell's role in the series was just one aspect of her life, as she is also a devoted mother to her five children. This must be the punk. <laughs> And Greg, this is my grandmother. John Ottron, who once served as the assistant to Phineas Henderson Sr. at the Mill Run Theater in Chicago, became involved in the production of the TV series Gimme a Break. Unfortunately, due to low ratings, the daughters on the show were let go at the end of the fifth season. However, Joey Lawrence, who remained on the show, was gaining popularity. In fact, he was named one of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World in May 1994. His appeal helped to fill the void left by the departing actresses. You go into it. <laughs> well, honey, you just can't be so sentimental. In the 1981 TV series Gimme a Break, Rosetta Lenoir's character, Nell Harper, became a housekeeper for a widowed police chief after her husband's passing in 1974. Off screen, Lenoir's real life husband, Egbert Brown, who owned a fleet of cabs, also died in 1974. One of the young actors in the series, Matthew Lawrence, who played the role of Nell's son, later became engaged to Cheryl Burke on her birthday, May 3, 2018. Paul Sand, who played a supporting role as a quirky neighbor, had an interesting background before acting. At the age of 18, he traveled to Paris and studied with renowned mime Marcel Marceau. This experience influenced his unique comedic style in Gimme a Break. As me. <laughs> John Ottron, known for his role in Gimme a Break, had an early appearance with Sean Penn and Crispin Glover in the short film, The Orkley Kid at the American Film Institute. Moving on to Joey Lawrence, after his stint on the show, he furthered his education at the University of Southern California. Lastly, Rosie O'Donnell, another cast member, made a notable appearance at Donald Trump and Marla Maples' 1993 wedding. These actors continued to make their marks in the industry beyond their time on Gimme a Break. She just loaned me enough money to buy myself a new dress. I, I told you it's me. Rosie O'Donnell, known for her role in Gimme a Break, has shown generosity by donating millions to Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. The show experienced numerous character recasts, with Nell's mother being portrayed by two different actresses, Hilda Haynes and Rosetta Lenoir. Helen Hunt was replaced by Bonnie Ursuth as Katie's friend Valerie, and Grandma Kaniski was played by three different actresses. Joey's father also had two different actors, Fred McCarran and Patrick Collins. Notably, Nell, played by Nell Carter, was a motherly figure on set, particularly to Laura Jill Miller. Her nurturing nature was genuine, adding a sense of family to the production. Fancy, it's not too bad when you got a fox raising your pants. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell, known for her role in Gimme a Break, has a notable connection to the late actress Helen Hayes. O'Donnell once owned and resided in Hayes' former home in Nyack, New York. Nell Carter, who also starred in the series, experienced health issues and personal tragedy. She passed away at her home, where her 13-year-old son, Joshua, found her. Prior to her death, Carter had undergone two brain operations in 1992 to address aneurysms. Despite these challenges, Carter achieved significant success in her career. She won Broadway's 1978 Tony Award for Best Actress in a featured role in a musical for Ain't Misbehavin'. Carter's exceptional performance in the play led to her reprising the role in the television version, which earned her an Emmy Award. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> We're slowing down. <laughs> and... Rue McClanahan, known for her role in Gimme a Break, was a liberal Democrat who publicly endorsed Barack Obama in the 2008 presidential election. She was not afraid to express her political views, even writing a letter to John Kerry in 23 to express her disappointment in his pheasant hunting. 
Despite her success on stage and screen, McClanahan experienced nerves and anxiety before performances. She would often have jitters on opening nights and worry about rehearsals, wanting to ensure she was fully prepared. McClanahan's portrayal of Blanche Devereaux in The Golden Girls was influenced by Rosalind Carter's accent. She was able to bring a unique and specific voice to the character, adding to her memorable and enduring presence on the show. Why you added you didn't throw in whining too bad. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell, a close friend of writer-director Nora Ephron, was unaware of Ephron's leukemia diagnosis until her death in 2012. Prior to her passing, Ephron had achieved success in the entertainment industry, including writing and directing the beloved film Julie and Julia. Nell Carter, known for her role in the TV series, had an accomplished stage career before joining the show. She won an Obie Award for her performance in the musical Ain't Misbehavin'. Paul Sand, who also starred in the series, began his career as an original member of the Second City Comedy Troupe in Chicago in 1959. The troupe included notable figures such as Eugene Trubnik, Barbara Harris, Alan Arkin, and Bill Matthew. I'm a little nervous when you didn't answer the door. You ever try the doorbell? Paul Sand's talent was recognized early in his career when he received the Variety Critics Poll Award for his Broadway performance in Metamorphoses in 1971. Nell Carter, on the other hand, had a more complex personal life, having been married and divorced twice, leaving behind a partner named Ann Kayser, an adult daughter named Tracy, and two adopted sons, Joshua and Daniel, when she passed away in 23. However, Carter's professional life was marked by success, including her role as Miss Hannigan in the 20th anniversary revival of Annie from 1997 to 1998. These individuals' accomplishments show their dedication to their craft and the impact they had on the entertainment industry. I had a cold, but he didn't want me to be disappointed. I was so dumb. In the sixth season of Gimme a Break, efforts were made to revamp the show, including a proposed retooling where Nell, played by Nell Carter, would become a house mother at a college dorm. However, this plan faced obstacles as NBC had already developed a college-oriented show, A Different World, and Nell's foster kids, Joey and Matthew Lawrence, did not fit into the new concept. Additionally, Nell's personal issues, including drug use and mood swings, led to a toxic work environment. On Rosie O'Donnell's first day on set, Nell reportedly used a derogatory slur towards the mother of the Lawrence brothers in their presence. Despite these challenges, the show continued until its cancellation in the spring of 1987. O'Donnell has since spoken about Nell's difficult behavior during the final season, highlighting her struggles with personal issues. Well, that, uh, I think that about concludes my lecture, and I'll just say, good night. Dr. Dr. Avery! Paul Sand, known for his role in Gimme a Break, was discovered and promoted by Mary Tyler Moore. He starred in Friend and Lovers and worked on Broadway with Valerie Harper. Rosie O'Donnell, another cast member, had a close friendship with Madonna and Penny Marshall. Jonathan Silverman, who also appeared in the show, attended Beverly Hills High School, where he shared classes with numerous famous actors and actresses. In the TV series Gimme a Break, which aired in the 1980s, the character Carl was affectionately known as Chief or Daddy by everyone except for his parents and brother, who called him by his first name. Actor Paul Sand, who played a role in the show, had a romantic relationship with actress Sandra Locke in 1972. Another actress in the series, Rosie O'Donnell, has a notable allergy to cats and horses, which may have posed some challenges for her during filming. You were my first love, and you beat my last love. Rue McClanahan, known for her role as Blanche on The Golden Girls, was initially considered for the part of the sex spot on Gimme a Break. However, producers thought it best not to typecast her, as she had already played a similar character on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Meanwhile, Thelma Hopkins, who starred in the hit group Tony Orlando, and Dawn joined the cast of Gimme a Break. Before her music career, Hopkins was a contract singer for Motown and worked with legendary acts like The Four Tops and Marvin Gaye. Lastly, Joey Lawrence, known for his role on Gimme a Break, is the older brother of Matthew and Andrew Lawrence. Prior to his acting career, Hopkins was a successful singer 
while Lawrence found fame as an actor. Wait for me again, uh uh. Oh, I can give you my word. You know, as long as I can, I can see him whenever I get a chance. Jonathan Silverman, known for his role in Gimme a Break, initially thought he would wait tables after high school graduation before turning to acting. Rue McClanahan, another cast member, faced a health challenge in 1997 when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She underwent a lumpectomy in chemotherapy and later gave lectures for breast cancer support groups titled Aging Gracefully. John Ottrin, yet another actor in the series, took part in the Northern Lights Aid Benefits, sharing the stage with Helen Hunt, Ted Danson, and Fisher Stevens. He walk over, he look at me, and he say, Now. Rue McClanahan, known for her role in Give Me a Break, was honored as the Woman of the Year in 1985 by the Pasadena Playhouse alumni and associates. She is also a mother and aunt to Mark Fish and actress Amelia Kincaid, respectively. In a separate instance, Rosie O'Donnell, a co-star in the series, showcased her knowledge as a lifeline on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in 1999. She accurately answered a question, helping the contestant win 32 tests. As a kind gesture, she invited the contestant to her show and gave him a week-long trip to London, England, UK. These instances demonstrate the accomplishments of the talented cast of Gimme a Break beyond their roles in the series. You know, if, if you, well, if you want it to have... Matthew Lawrence, known for his role on Gimme a Break, is the uncle of his character's three on-screen sisters. Off camera, Lara Jill Miller, another cast member, reported seeing cocaine on set. The show's impact extended to Rosie O'Donnell, who was offered the lead in Agnes Brown, but declined due to her emotional state after the Columbine High School shootings. <laughs> Ned Revolves, known for her role in Gimme a Break, had a background in singing with a band in community theater. Jay Johnson, another cast member, performed in the two, and only at the Atlantic Theater in New York. Behind the scenes, the show's producers were deeply concerned about Nell Carter's struggles with drug use, binge eating, and fluctuating weight. Her self-destructive lifestyle led to multiple visits to rehab and attempts to address her addiction. In 1984, she overdosed on sleeping pills and champagne during a trip to London, but with the help of her friend Liza Minnelli, she was able to seek treatment at the Halt Salden Clinic in Minnesota where she successfully kicked her habit and lost over 90 pounds. As for Jay Johnson, he continued to perform in various productions, including a run of the two, and only in 24. Oh, now, your prince has come. Rosie O'Donnell has expressed her deep love for the classic movie, The Sound of Music, revealing it as her all-time favorite during a video link appearance on the 45th anniversary and cast reunion of the film in 2010. In the world of music, Whitney Houston made her acting debut in the TV series Gimme a Break, before becoming a global superstar. She played Rita, a friend of Katie Kaniski, in a non-singing role in a season three episode titled Katie's College. Paul San, an actor on the show, began his acting journey at the young age of 11 when he started studying with renowned drama coach Viola Spallin. These individuals have made their mark in the entertainment industry in their own unique ways, leaving a lasting impact for audiences to enjoy. Julie, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sit down. In a Twinder Teen interview, Joey Lawrence was asked whether he would prefer to reboot Blossom or Gimme a Break, to which he chose Blossom, stating that Gimme a Break was done so long ago, it's not really relevant at this point. The show, which aired from 1981 to 1987, featured a controversial episode titled Baby of the Family, where Samantha, played by Laura Jill Miller, dressed up her brother Joey, portrayed by Lawrence, in blackface for a performance at Nell's Black Church. This incident was ranked number 38 on TV Land's 100 Most Unexpected TV Moments. John Hoyt, who played the role of the Reverend Wainwright on Gimme a Break, was also known for being the television spokesperson in a series of Midas Muffler commercials in the 1960s. Hoyt's career spanned over five decades, and he appeared in numerous films and television shows, including The Asphalt Jungle, The Twilight Zone, and Peyton Place. Despite his many roles, Hoyt may be best remembered by some for his time on Gimme a Break, which provided a platform for him to showcase his acting skills to a wide audience. Puffing. <laughs> Next day. <laughs> 
make it work. Nell Carter, known for her role in Gimme a Break, made her television debut in the 1978 musical satire Cindy, where she portrayed one of the wicked stepsisters. In Gimme a Break, she played Nell Harper, a housekeeper for the Kaniski family who resided at 2938 Wells Drive. Interestingly, John Hoyt, who played the on-screen father, passed away six years after his on-screen son, Jonathan, who was played by Lucas Haas. Despite the show's light-hearted nature, these behind-the-scenes facts add depth to the series. In the TV series, Give Me a Break, a notable inconsistency occurs in the episode Julie Smokes when Carl claims he had never hit his kids before, despite having slapped Katie in the pilot. This contradiction may have gone unnoticed by some viewers. The show also has a connection to the world of literature and science. Writer Patrick Breen drew inspiration for an off-Broadway play, which was later adapted into a screenplay from a physics book by Stephen J. Good. The book discussed how a single decision or action can set off a chain reaction of events leading to different outcomes. Moreover, the series features veteran actor John Hoyt, who was dubbed by Paul Frees in several scenes of the film Spartacus. Hoyt's career spanned several decades, and he appeared in numerous TV shows and films. These interesting facts add depth to the show, revealing connections to the worlds of science, literature, and film. It's uh, the Blue Water Cruise Line. Uh, the ship doesn't leave till tomorrow. And now... Uh, yeah? In her autobiography, Rue McClanahan expressed her criticism of the show's quality, despite being considered for a regular role as a love interest for the chief. However, she ultimately moved on to star in the successful sitcom, Golden Girls. The show underwent significant changes in its third season, with new producers, writers, and a theme song. The chief's brother, Uncle Ed, and Nell's friend, Angie, were written out, while two new characters, Addie Wilson and Joey Donovan, were introduced. Grandma Kaniski was also dropped from the show, with the explanation that she had passed away. Despite these changes, the show continued to air until 1987, with a total of six seasons. Rosie O'Donnell, who played the role of Maggie O'Brien, was known for her fandom of Tom Cruise and the band Savage Garden. Her character brought a fresh energy to the show, contributing to its continued success. Overall, Give Me a Break underwent several changes throughout its run, with new characters and personnel joining the show. Despite some criticism, the show remained popular among audiences and is still remembered today. It didn't. <laughs> Nedra Valls, a veteran actress in Gimme a Break, began her career as a toddler, having been introduced to the stage by her parents who were vaudeville performers. Billed as Baby Nedra, she started her journey in the world of entertainment at a very young age. John Hoyt, another actor in the series, had an impressive career that spanned over four decades. He was one of the few actors to have appeared on both the original Star Trek series and the original Battlestar Galactica series, demonstrating his versatility and range as an actor. Rosie O'Donnell, who also starred in Gimme a Break, suffered a heart attack in August 2012. This health scare served as a reminder of the importance of taking care of one's health, even for those who may seem invincible. In summary, the cast of Gimme a Break was made up of talented and experienced actors, each with their own unique backgrounds and contributions to the world of entertainment. Maximum capacity, not to exceed. <laughs> <laughs> if Give Me a Break, the popular 1981 TV series brought laughter and joy to your living room, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your favorite moments, characters, or how this show may have influenced your perspective on television and comedy. Did you see a bit of yourself in Nell Harper's spunk or relate to the hilarious antics of the Kaniski family? How did this series make you feel? And what memories did it create for you? Your experiences and thoughts matter to us. By liking, sharing, and commenting on this post, you can help keep the conversation going and engage with a community that cherishes the nostalgia of 80s television. Want more cinematic explorations like this one? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for a regular dose of entertainment and memories. Together, let's celebrate the timeless appeal of Gimme a Break and other classic TV shows that continue to resonate with us today. Shot. Thanks. What should we do? Mm, I got a great idea.